before if we had if we were coming into close proximity with another solar system. Sure. And one of the things you talked about was near Earth asteroids discovery by survey. And I just wanted to point this out. It only takes us through 2015, but you can see this dramatic increase in NEOs. Now that could be because of our detection capabilities as well. So I want to qualify that. Um, but you just did a video on this, Wayne. What was your observation about comets in our area and things like that? After reading the preparedness document by uh, Damien and the interactive working group that the uh, President Council, and by the way, ordered by Congress, nevertheless, um, here's what I come from the conclusion. They know uh, something is up, even with the enhanced capacity that we have, right, in being able to spot these NEOs. Steve, it's very clear to me that the admission of this document was simply this. There's very little that we're going to be able to do. Now, caveat that to, sir, is that they apparently have been working on technologies of where they think they can actually deflect some of these. Yeah, and then we got a white paper that also talked about, in conclusion, a close encounter between the Earth and a large charged object, be it a planet or a brown dwarf surrounded by a cloud of ionizing gas, like we're theorizing here, would cause destructive events on our surface in the Earth's crust. Um, and, then, and then she goes on to say, I don't think bases under the surface are much safer. The only safe uh, place would be not being on Earth. Now, <laughs> that, that I agree with, but I also have been watching this phenomenon long enough to know that I would expect certain things to happen based on our observation that did not happen, okay? So in other words, one of them was this, when we watched this intense energy coming around as the sun was rotating and we're rotating around the sun, this very large coronal hole stream that we keep getting, I would have expected that to be much more damaging, much more impacting to the earth than it has been. Yeah, uh, listen. <laughs> I think we're beginning to see enough anecdotal evidence that says, okay, uh, the current situation on the sun today is that we saw those two large coronal uh, sunspots come through. And right before it turns to the earth, this thing was spouting, you know, like Mount Vesuvius. Right. Uh, gets in front of the earth and all of a sudden we have negative polarity. It just shuts down. And it makes me wonder if that's part of why we're seeing these two Birkeland currents and positive and negative so strong is because they are deploying some type of a system to maybe make us less magnetically opposed to whatever's going on. So we're not getting pulled one way or the other. We're yes. Getting... And that kind of goes along with what Daniel was telling us in terms of the reason for the chemtrails and the reason for all the different, uh, you know, things that we see in the skies and all the different devices and wacky things that we see being deployed on Sechi, <laughs> right? Correct. So I do theorize that they are, they are doing as much as they can to mitigate the effects of the system right now. That's my theory. And I think that they know, and I think that this should give some solace to all the serious Nibiru researchers is now – they have not come out and said anything about Planet X or Nibiru. And, and one of the things they were very strong to point out, there is a difference between comets and asteroids. Okay. And also where asteroids are concerned, we now know that the composition of these asteroids seem to be in two classes. They seem to be rock or metal. Uh, I did not know this, Steve, but it's, look at that. By the way, not to digress and I'll finish, look at Core 2. Let's take a looky. <laughs> it's a, so that is the point. If, if, if there is a, a meteor droid that comes in um, that is, or an asteroid, a small one, that's made of metal, mostly in the composition, uh, the intensity of that is much more. What is going on? Look at that. I know. It never, it never ceases to amaze me. Come on now. Okay, pause. All right. Now let's go to one frame per second. And let's step through this, baby. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, no, that was pretty much the thought. And listen, I believe that our physicist is correct. And I asked her a question on, all right, what I was left, and by the way, I read a number of the presidential directives uh, that are, Steve, they have spent and are spending a lot of resources 
in on this topic. They really do believe, and in fact, part of what DHS said is that they are convinced that it's not a matter of, of if, it's just when, and they have contingency plans they're building right now, and they classify them into four areas, which would be called a, a city, a region, a district, which is a much more part of a larger region, and a continent. Okay, continue. Well, so the contingency plans are now coming into place. Um, if we can't deflect these things, then um, then it's recovery. 